Everybody hear me? <laughs> and who are we gonna blame that for on who told me to turn the mic off? <laughs> okay, we'll st okay, we'll start again. Sorry about that uh, sound problem. Hey, hearing my heavy breathing earlier. Uh, <laughs> okay, I I'll start from the beginning. Today we're gonna be painting the two-headed troll and we're gonna be working on eyes today. Now, eyes are very, very difficult to paint, and they are a beginner's painter worst nightmare. But you can get away with a lot of things, and you can do a lot of things to enhance the miniature without having that showcase standard set of eyes. Now, for example, I have here, this is uh, Fred the Barbarian. This is an early first edition, first edition miniature from Games Workshop, if anybody remembers this from the early 80s. This was uh, given to me by Highland Lass, Francis, absolutely beautiful. But if you zoom in to the face, I haven't done any eyes on this at all. All I've done is given his face an ink wash. And all it means is sometimes you do not have to paint eyes in your miniatures to get the effect you want. Um, another example would be on this one. This is a Hero Forge miniature I'm painting at the minute. It's nearly completed. Let's get to the focus on it. And again, I have not painted the eyes on this one. All I've done is highlighted around the eyes and given an ink wash. But it's given a fantastic look on that face. Even though the eyes aren't painted, it actually looks like the eyes are painted. <laughs> awesome. Seeing that making me nervous now saying that. <laughs> but anyway, the point the point what the point I'm trying to say is many people worry about painting eyes on miniatures. And on many of the miniatures, um, you really do not have to paint your eyes in. Now when we do start painting our eyes, um, I go for a very simple effect. This is a flesh golem. And as you can see, all I've done is I've given him white pupils and gone around in black and just added a dot to the eye. And that is all you need. And that's all I ever do on my miniatures for painting eyes. But I'm gonna show you how to paint them today anyway. But what I'm trying to show you is how easy it is to um, make a good looking miniature without the need of spending hours and hours trying to get those eyes configured right. Now, if you want to go down the more showcase standard of doing your eyes, then I've got this one that I've done where I've actually highlighted the cheekbones and everything to produce the effect on the eyes. And that is by using shades on the skin tones without any black at all apart from the pupil. And what you've done there is you work a darker tone around the top of the eyes and your light skin tones at the bottom and that is making the eyes look really quite sweet on this one. So what I am going to show you is, I'll get back into focus, your basic skin tones. Now, today we're back onto the troll and again, I'm playing with this focus today. You'll have to excuse me going back and forth, zooming in and out. So our first port of call is we're gonna paint the eyes with white on our trolls. And it's a good size miniature to show you on. The eyes are quite large. Uh, so hopefully I won't shake too much while I'm doing it. We're just using a basic white paint. This is Valleco. We can use MSP or any colors. And I'm using Pure Black by MSP. I'm using the MSP one because it's a little bit more runnier. As you can see from the troll from last week, um, I've just painted the base. I haven't done any dry brushing on the base. Um, and I've given the whole troll a brown ink wash and it's coming up really nice
Um, I've also carried on with the stone giant. The stone giant, I've added some stones and rubble to the base. I've given the whole miniature a primer coat of dirty grey. Now, like I showed you in the last uh, show, when you're painting skin tones, I'm starting with the darkest colour, which is the dirty grey. And in this show today, I'll add some white to this, and then we'll do all the highlights over the skin and bring that out to a very much lighter grey colour. And that'll give some really nice effects to the whole muscle tone of this miniature. Um, let me just quickly show you this other one. I forgot to show you this one. This is the Orc Scorpion Rider. And again, very basic on the eyes. Um, but simple and easy. And that again is just black, white with your black pupil. Um, you can do eyes without pupils, like on the scorpion itself. Um, and that works really well. The way to do that is I paint the eyes white, a couple of coats of white paint. And then I've gone over with a green ink wash. And then I've gone back over with white. And it almost gives an luminous eyes. It looks awesome on this scorpion rider. Hi, Stephen. Um, I've been carrying on with the piggy. The piggy has had its, uh, I think it's three coats of pale skin now. Um, the piggy I'll be covering with a nice soft tone ink wash by Army Painter. Um, and that'll go into all the recesses. And then I'll just dry brush over the little, little piggy. And then little piggy goes in the miniature like so. But what I'm going to do now is I will get this white painted in on his eyes. So I'll give the white a good little shake, get all those pigments flowing. <laughs> Hello Mighty Lancer Games. If you live in the UK and uh, you love miniatures from Games Workshop, Reaper, WizKids, any any company really, Mighty Lancer Games will has you covered and if you become my patron, you get a 10% off discount code on all their products. Um, so it's well, well worth going and taking a look at their shop. And they're really super friendly and nice. Okay, let's see if I can get this into focus. Again, let's move this a tiny bit over here. I find with the autofocus on these cameras, if you do them manually, they're okay. But if you have it on autofocus, what will happen is it'll focus on the palette and it won't do anything on my miniature. You can put your hand behind, but then I can't paint. So I have to do it manually so I can uh, get the job done. Now with the painting of eyes, as you can see by my brush, if you look where the paint is on my brush, it's right on the end of the brush and I've got a nice fine head to that. Um, what I do, I dip my paintbrush and then I actually take the paint off, just leaving a tiny bit on the tip. Then I'm using both my hands, I'm cupping the miniature and I'm using my left hand to support my right hand and I can just easily get into the eye and just quickly add that white. Just like so. And I can do that with the other three as well. Like I say, it's quite difficult on camera because I'm in a different position from painting than I normally sit. But it's working all right. Again, I'm using my left hand to support my right hand. And we just going into the eye and adding that white. And there we are. That's all the white in for the eyes. Now, when you've got such a little amount of paint on your paintbrush, make sure 
make sure you wash it instantly because that paint will dry very fast on your paintbrush. Yeah, that's you, Mighty Lancer Games. I I still haven't worked out what all these bits do, um, but it sounds like every time someone gives me a cheer or a wave, um, I get bits added to my account, and it all turns into um, credit. Um, so it's it's all magical things of Twitch. Um, uh, the longer I do it, the more I'll understand. Okay, so we've got the white on his two eyes. And I've just got some black, not that one, the MSP one, because it's small bunny. Now with the black, again, very, very simple. All we're doing for the eye, I'm actually going to change my paintbrush now. I'm going into, these are my favourite paintbrushes because of the price. Um, they're not the best but I've been using them for years and years and they're army painter. This one is the Insane Detail paintbrush and you can get these from Mighty Lancer Games. I think they do a pack of three. Insane Detail, they've got a dry brush and an ordinary brush um, and a very good price um, and they last a long time if you look after them. Um, so again, tiny amount of paint on the end of your brush. I don't know if you can see that. Tiny bit. And what I'm going to do with these ones is we go above the eye. Now, what we're doing is going across the top of the eye and making it dark. You can go all the way around the eye, and I'll show you that now. But for human miniatures, I find it's better just to do the top of the eye, a line across the top in black. And what we're doing is just going around and making it nice and dark so the center shows up. And again, I don't know if you can see this. There you go. We're just going across the top because this will be where natural shadows would be around the eye and as it's a troll we can give them black eyes and get away with it there we are so just going around those two eyes with the black and again on the other two think of it like painting the letter T um, what you do is you paint a letter T above the I and the center of the T goes through the white and that will give you your um, pupil. Now what I'm going to do with these two heads is this one I'm going to keep with the black and this one I'll do with the, with the letter T I just told you and I'll keep it clear and then you can see the difference on each. Now for the pupil, uh, for the black pupil, I'm just going with a tiny black dot that's one. That's two. If you want to control your paintbrush, um, many, many years ago, I was in the army and they teach you how to shoot rifles. And it's exactly the same principle when you put your pupil in on the, um, on the miniature. All you're doing is you go up to the miniature and when you take that shot or you put that pupil in, you hold your breath. So what you do, you go up to there, hold your breath. This will steady you. And I'm going to hold my breath. And then you breathe again. So it's very important because when you hold your breath, it steadies you a tiny bit more. And once again, I'll show you on this one. I'm going into the eye. Now I'm going to hold my breath. And we're done. And you've got your eyes done there. So this one, you've got the black going around the eye with the pupil. And this one here, 
We've got just the top of the eyes. Let me see if I can get you a closer look. Okay, let's see if we can get you in closer to give you an idea. There we go. See? Let me get my little pointy stick. So with this with these little, little eyes here, all I've done is added the black across the top and a line down the center of the eyes. And with this side, I've given black all the way around the eye, which gives a much deeper, darker presence to the eye. And that works as well. But as you can see, it's very, very simple. Um, but your main thing is controlling that paintbrush, keeping a steady hand and by by controlling your breathing, that really does help. <laughs> yeah, unless you've got gills, you can <laughs> you can be a, a gilly fish. <laughs> gilly fish? <laughs> okay. Um, right, another another thing that I like to do with eyes, I can't do it now because they'll still be wet, is I like to add a gloss varnish. Now, Vallejo, Army Painter, um, they all do fantastic varnishes to add to your miniatures. Now gloss varnish um, is perfect for eyes and you just put the uh, little drop of gloss varnish in there and don't worry gloss it looks white when you put it on. I mean I remember the first time I used the gloss varnish and my whole mini was white. I was like oh my god but it dries clear so don't worry about any of this just let it give it time and it goes and it dries clear. Oh, I was going to show you as well. Um, you can do uh, crystallize. Um, we'll go to one of my big minis. This is the crystal golem. Uh, let me get into focus. This is a uh, crystal golem from Mantic Games. Uh, I made with um, clay base. It's all air hardening clay, and your crystals all painted up nicely. Um, absolutely beautiful miniature. Um, if you haven't bought any miniatures from Mantic Games, uh, you should really check them out. They are fantastic. If you're a gamer, they do some really good quality uh, miniatures, uh, very affordable. And uh, once again, you can get all their stock from Mighty Lancer Games. Um, what I'm going to do is zoom in on the eye. There you go. So if you wanted to get like elemental eyes, again, I've gone like on the scorpion I've used whites and then some very very light greens and then for the pupil of the eye to give it a nice outstanding glare I've just gone over with a, a green mixed in with some white as a pupil and that works really well okay let's go and move on to a human dwarf sized miniature and see if we can get the eyes done on that one. Now we've got this very happy little merry dwarf barmaid. Let's get her in focus for you. Hello. Hello. Okay. Let me just wash my brush. Now for these eyes, I am going to stick with the insane detail brush because this 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 is a tiny little mini. Okay. There we are. Um, again, see what I see. When you get this a bit closer, I want you to see exactly what I'm up to. So, come on, focus. Ooh, there you go. There you go. There you go. See, that's ultra. Oh, no, she's gone. There we are. There you go. Hello. Now, for this miniature. Um, all I've done, I've given it a pale flesh wash and then I've used army painter flesh wash over the whole mini miniature on all the flesh areas and then taken away some of the flesh wash using my cotton buds 
and it gives a really nice effect. That's all I've done to this skin tone and it really does look effective, especially on the cheekbones. Once you remove some of the ink wash, it looks beautiful. So what we're going to do is we're going straight into that white. Trying to get a nice little head on your paintbrush. And then we're going straight in. There we go. Come on. Then. And we're going straight into the eyes. That's what. Taking the paint off. What I find as well with the eyes is you can do this one, and the second one is the hardest. <laughs> Why I don't know but it does. Um, I think it's because of the angle, but you can, it's very difficult. And as you can see, I have made a little mess there, but that's not a problem because we are going to go over the eye anyway. And any mistakes you make on your eye are hidden by when you add that like eyeliner, as I call it, around the eye. So when you when you do your eyes, I mean I've been painting eyes for thirty odd years, and it's still I hate I hate eyes I hate painting eyes. But you got to keep doing them. So never give up. That's my motto. Never give up. If your brush is a little bit as I call sour at the end, just dip your fingers in the water and just go like this up down the end of your brush and that'll give it a nice point again. Just like so. Okay, so we're going on to the black. A tiny bit of black and we're just adding those pupils. Let me see if I get closer, sorry. There you go. Tiny bit of pupil. There we go. Good. Now what we need to do is go over with our flesh tone again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a little bit of scholar flesh. Oh, pokey stick. A bit of, only the tiniest bit and what we can do there any mistakes we make on our eyes and this is how you fix your mistakes is you just go back around especially on the bottom and you just go over that cheekbone and you can highlight the bottom of the cheekbone like so we'll make some on her nose And while we're there, we'll move on to our forehead because what the key is to get it all matching in. There we are. Happy little, happy little dwarf serving lots of yummy hobgoblin beers to the Goblin King. Hello. And that's all you need to do. It's very, very simple, but it does take time and it does take practice. Um, I'm streaming for an hour on each stream, so we got um, we got half an hour left. An hour is more than long enough for for my brain box. <laughs> Okay then, so that's your basics of doing eyes. Now, I did say about teeth. Now, there is a trick to painting teeth, and we're going back to our two-headed troll for the teeth. Hello. Okay, let's get some focus again. I don't want to be too close, but I don't want to be too far. That's about right. Now, for the teeth, we want them to be manky, but we also want to be able to see the teeth. Now, many of you, including myself, I used to paint the teeth <laughs> never long enough. I'm sorry, Michelle. 
Um, I, I used to paint the teeth individually on all my miniatures and it was painstaking. Uh, but there is a fast and simple way to do it and that is just get some, I got some, this is desert sand but you can use uh, bleached bone, you can use uh, skull white, uh, you can use any creamy bony colour. Um, and this will be for the top of the teeth, the very recesses of the teeth. And then what we're going to use is a lighter colour and that'll be me just adding some white onto the desert sand. Now what we do is we get our desert sand, take a tiny bit out of our pot. And again I'm going to go back, I've got one of these Valeco brushes, um, it's a nice little, nice little brush. Um, and what we do with this is instead of painting each of the teeth individually we just go over the whole of the teeth in one foul swoop <laughs> and it's very simple and the reason why we do this is because we're going to let the ink wash do the work for us so we're going straight over all these teeth boom 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 I could spend hours painting them individually, but this way works just as fast and it looks quite impressive when it's done. And if you've got a big army to paint, then this is valuable to know. All we do, over the teeth. There we are, so that's your first part done. Now what we're doing, keeping the paint on the brush, I'm adding some white to that desert sand. I'm just mixing a tiny bit here, but adding some white. And this is going to be the highlight of the top of the teeth. So you've got all that dirt at the bottom, and now we're going to the top, and we're just going a tiny little line over the top of the teeth, like a little wear line. Where They've been munching on things and their teeth are worn down, but as they can't clean their teeth, they got that like dirt all around the bottoms. And that's what we do for that. Now we let that dry for a couple of minutes and then we add our brown ink wash and you'll get a fantastic effect because what happens is your brown ink wash will go into all the recesses of each individual tough teeth, tough teeth, and it will bring out all the details so you don't have to paint them individually. Okay then, oh, we're flying along today, this is good. Okay, while that dries, we shall go on to our stone giant. Now this is a fantastic mini from Reaper, and like you, you, like you can see, I've already done the base. Uh, all I need to do now is get some skin tones on this bad boy. And for that, we are going back to our dirty bone. I should read what everybody's saying, shouldn't I? <laughs> okay, so we are just getting on with that grey. Lots and lots of grey. I do love my paints, you know. And we've already got some white there, so this is awesome. Um, what I'm going to do is I will do my special. I will get my tissue. Got some nice fancy kitchen roll today with little paisley patterns on it better than the toilet roll <laughs> there we are put it on the table and where's my yummy little brush there we go we'll go with we'll go with a medium sized dry brushy type brush today um, and we are going straight on to our tissue and we are adding that grey going into the white Adding that white, mixing it in on my tissue. Get a nice lighter grey colour. Taking off the paint and we can go straight on to our miniature. And we're doing the whole mini because we shall be going back um, over all the clothes and items after we've finished all the skin tones.
Now with the with skin tones on this miniature, it's very simple because we'll be using black ink wash on rocks. And then we'll be highlighting it with some browns and some greens and all sorts of lovely colors just to bring out the stone effect on this guy. You'll see it better on the back. Here we go, which is awesome. Look at that, straight away, boom. All those highlights pop in. Mm. There we go. <laughs> right, back into the grey, add in a little bit more white super fast getting the same consistency in the color on the brush and we're just carrying on get rid of that hair go away hair we don't like you anymore make sure we don't miss his bum calf muscles and along the toes Hi Mokai, thanks for subscribing. There we go. Come on, lovely already. Come over the face. Still need to work on that a little bit more. Getting that same colour. Coming around. There we go. I want it lighter on the top. What I'm going to do now is add some more white into my grey mix. And this will bring out a little bit more of the lights, light source shining down. And I'm going to on the top of the head. Bum 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 bum. On the top of his shoulders. Arms, his thigh, feet, biceps, top of his ears, top of his nose, his fingies, there you go. back, top of his back. And I think it would be hitting there, so top of the calf muscle, back of the leg, just there too. gives a nice kind of stony effect to the skin. It's quite simple to do as well. <laughs> fingies, yeah, fingies. I call them fingies, you know I do. I got fingies. I got four fingies and a fumby. <laughs> right, I'll let that dry a little bit. With the um, with the uh, uh, stone giant, I'm going to add a black black ink wash over the whole mini. Um, that'll go into all the recesses and bring out all the lovely shades on that miniature. Um, and what will happen then, once that's dry, um, I'll go over again with those light skin tones. Uh, let me show you the piggy. Piggy! Now, piggy goes with our two-headed troll. Now, piggy needs some soft tone army ink wash. Um, very simple little piggy. Um, I've just done them in pale skin and with this uh, soft tone ink wash it will bring out all those lovely uh, ripples around the piggy's face. Piggy face. <laughs> I 
Okay. With the ink wash, again, um, this is a fantastic um, army painter for ink wash. Uh, Valeco are one of my favourites. Um, MSP do a beautiful black and a brown. Uh, but army painter for flesh wash. Now, flesh wash, let's see if I find it here. Strong tone, flesh wash. This is army painter flesh wash, and it is my go to. There you go. It is my go-to skin tone uh, for all my matches. It is so easy to use and it just is the right blend of colours to really enhance your miniatures and give them a really nice effect as you can see by um, our little our little Hobbit barmaid. Um, that's, that's Army Painter Flesh Wash on her and it looks beautiful. Um, this is Army Painter flesh wash been added to our Fred the Barbarian and you know yes I've highlighted the muscles of course but for your first primer ink wash uh, to get that initial uh, flesh tone it is a godsend it really is a great wash I mean if you're a super duper professional painter um, you don't need uh, ink washes uh, but for tabletop painters and beginners ink washes are a must and I recommend them 100%. Um, okay, so we have got our little bit of ink wash uh, on there. This is our soft tone ink wash for Piggy. Now I'm going to go and fold this over. Ink wash can be quite messy, so if you're painting on your mum or dad's kitchen table, um, put some tissues down, put some paper down. Um, I remember back in the 80s, my mum, well, she didn't speak to me for a long time because I uh, got paint all over the kitchen table and she was not a happy bunny. So if you're in the house, I'm in my workshop, I'm allowed to make a mess, but on your kitchen table or in the living room, make sure you've got a proper area where you've got you know, paper down, you know, look after, respect your parents' houses. Um, respect at your friends houses wherever you are um, make sure you're clean and tidy unless it's in your own house it, what you do in your own house is up to you but if you're at someone else's house or it's your parents just remember that it costs them a fortune to buy all these things okay so look this is how simple piggy is we got Piggy, we've added it all to his face. And it's going all into those lovely little recesses of the Piggy. And, uh, try to leave a little bit, little bit more in the ears, because that gives a lovely little bit of shading inside the ear. Um, I'll take that, take the ink off. And I'm gonna put Piggy down just there, Piggy. And I have my cotton buds. I'm going to pick Piggy up. Piggy. And I'm just going to start taking off the excess ink from Piggy. Around his ears. On the top of his nose. Just around his little fat belly. It's quite strange. Um, um, I had uh, pork chops for tea and now I'm painting Piggy. <laughs> They were delicious pork chops, mate. Yeah, Claire, Claire cooks her pork chops in the oven. And I don't know what she does to them. I don't know if she puts some seasoning on the pork chop. Um, but, oh, they're delicious. Actually, they're pork, lo they're pork loins. They are pork loins and they were, we had them in rolls. Oh, they're delicious. A nice pork loin roll. And it's nice and crispy as well. So just working your way around Piggy and what we're doing is just taking off excess ink and leaving the ink where we want little Piggy to have some ink effects. There we go. Piggy. So I'll leave him dry over here.
and I think ah uh, yes actually let me just doing 10,000 things at once as I always do uh, but it's a bit different when I know people are watching me <laughs> I was actually I was actually um, I was actually t uh, talking about Gorilla with a brush. <laughs> I was actually thinking of Gorilla with a brush when I said it, and that wasn't a disrespectful mark. Uh, you know how much I respect him. Uh, but when you get to his standard, um, it's like it's like Back to the Future, where we're going. There's no need for roads. <laughs> you know, it's it's like you know he he doesn't need it. <laughs> but. Um, I well, uh, ink wash is super helpful for all miniature painters and definitely definitely if you're a tabletop miniature painter like myself or a speed painter um, ink wash will get your armies on that table faster than you could possibly imagine okay talking of ink wash we're going back to the ink wash and this time we are going with a bit of the old the old go-to agrax earth shade if I can find it. There we go. Got some little Agrax earth shade. And this is for the teeth that I was talking to you about on the two-headed troll. Giving it a good little shake. And we're going back to that little troll. Just going to use a normal brush for this one. And all we do is take some of that ink. Take off the excess sink, uh, ink on the side of your pot. And we go over the whole of the teeth on our ogre. And boom, all the teeth instantly become individual teeth. Because that ink wash has parted them. Thank you. Just take off any excess. The way you get rid of excess as well is you just take the ink off your brush and then place the brush back onto the miniature and that will soak up the excess ink. Now let me show you what I mean by the teeth. Let me get this in focus for you. As you can see the teeth are now individual because the ink has gone into the, the, in the individual teeth. I keep on saying that same word and I'm going to use my little stick. And as you can see, because I used that um, desert sand on the top of the teeth, it's given a two-tone effect and makes it look manky and old at the top of the teeth. And it's a lighter at the bottom. And that took us, what, a minute or so to do all those teeth? Where if you're doing them individually, that's going to take a lot longer. But you're getting the same effect super fast. Okay. Um, I'll wash my brushes. And I need to drink some water. It's, again, it's really murky and hot. Say the magic words to summon more painters. Magic word. What could the magic word be? I know what it is. Pokey stick. <laughs> Gorilla's so humble. I do use ink. I do. I do. I think I used it 10 years ago. I think I did. I think I used it 10 years ago, Mikey. <laughs> um, okay. Um, while you're all here, um, I'm going to quickly show you um, a dragon giveaway I'm doing for next Tuesday. Um, this is the Gargantuan Dragon. It is Gargantuan. This is the Gargantuan Dragon by WizKids Games. And I will... Oh dear. There you go. Yeah. This is the Gargantuan Dragon by WizKids Games. And it is going to be given away on my Twitch stream next Tuesday. Because next Tuesday is my three year anniversary of being um, on Patreon. 
so if you're in the Goblin Army and you tune in next Tuesday on my Twitch channel, um, we're going to be giving this away to one of my patrons. Um, absolutely awesome. Okay, let's carry on with our painting. What I'm going to do now is I'm going back to the stone giant and we are going to just quickly go over. <laughs> I love you too, Tommy. <laughs> um, I'm going to just go over with my black ink wash just to show you how quickly you can highlight with the ink washes. Now, I am going to use my Nana Oil. Right, with, um, I don't know if you've seen these before. Um, these are absolutely disgusting little paint pot holders. They were, I'd say disgusting, I mean that because it's covered in ink wash now. Uh, they're fantastic. Now, I got these from Fenris Games. Um, Fenris Games is a nice company from the UK who specialize more in custom made miniatures and little odds and ends for your worktops um, and he's made these and they fit perfectly for your games workshop uh, pots it's got a nice weight to it so they're not going anywhere uh, because i think all of us have spilt over our ink washers and this is an awesome thing to have to stop that from happening um, i'll leave links to fenris games as well uh, on the video when it goes uploaded to YouTube. Yes, they're fantastic, Michelle. Honestly, um, I have spilt many of my pots, and I know you all have. Um, and it just, you know, that's not going anywhere. I mean, even if the cat comes on the table, it'll probably go that way. It'll probably go that way. Uh, but it's not going to really tip over. It'll, it will, it can tip over, but it's a lot safer than it was. Okay, so I've got this huge brush here it's just a soft brush for adding ink wash and we're just going to go over the whole of this giant and the black will instantly transform again the skin and we'll go over that rock because that rock is going to be painted as well we're going over all the skin areas on the thighs hands and don't worry too much about putting too much on because we'll be taking it off with our cotton buds in a minute on the highest areas to give some nice effects before we do the last highlighting on our miniature. Just simple black ink wash going over the whole of the skin areas. Now the important part now is making sure we remove ink on certain parts in the area and we watch for pooling because pooling is what ruins an ink wash. Um, so many people make the mistake of doing what I've just done there and then leaving it dry and what happens is you'll have pooling on your miniatures on the back, on the bottom of the feet, on the neck, on the hands and once that and just like there and it looks disgusting when it's dried it's just blobs of black all over your miniature so this is where our little cotton buds come back in thank you for stopping by and here we go with our cotton bud we just take it directly off where we want so i want to take some off the top of the head and I'm taking it all off the highest areas and leaving the rest with that lovely black darkness in all the recesses. And this is a very, very simple, fast way of highlighting your miniatures without the need of double painting or triple painting or 
shading or highlighting you can actually do this instead of adding another coat of paint on top um, if you get it done correctly uh, you'll still need to add highlights eventually but if it's for a quick basic tabletop standard you can get away with just taking away the ink wash on certain parts of your miniature and it will give a lovely effect and that's how speed painters can get away with painting a whole batch of miniatures in record-breaking time the key is to paint your miniatures nice and easily and fast for your tabletop but but still trying to keep a decent quality to your miniature um, because we all want a nice looking mini and if you can get away with it by do, using your inks correctly um, you'll be amazed at what you can accomplish in a couple of days and your painting will just look awesome and you'll go and play D&D &D with your friends and show them your painted miniatures and they'll be like did you paint that? yeah when you're doing your ink washes keep an eye on it because the ink will keep on going down the miniature and pooling so you have to just now and again just like the under the arm just remove a little bit under the arm and this one's about done very simple to get that nice looking stone giant skin effect once that's dry I'll probably add some browns I will highlight a little bit more over the top of the head and the chest muscles and on the thighs top of the feet okay so we're moving back onto our troll now I have to start making a start on his little fingernails now troll fingernails are going to be dirty and chipped and nasty I am going to be going going with ghoul skin by MSP and I'm going to paint all the little nails in ghoul skin because it'll look manky so tiny little bit on my palette just going with a fine brush by Vileco and we're going over the little toes on our little troll Yes, it's little things like this, you know, just picking out the toenails. Uh, it all helps enhance the miniature. And remember, there's no specific colour for any fantasy miniature. I've said this before. If you want to do your troll purple, if you want to do your troll pink, then you do it that colour. You do it any colour you want. Um, there's no rules in fantasy. Um, so, you know, open your mind to whatever you think you like. I mean, I know, um, I know my Claire, um, she wants everything in purple. Um, I, my favourite colour is green. Uh, but uh, if Claire had her way, I think the whole house would be purple. difficult I can't get my hands together to control my painting on there we go that's better when you're doing things like nails on miniatures especially on monsters um, as you can see they're drying now these little toenails I'm gonna put another coat on this one because it's not too fine but what you're doing is you're not trying to 
Thank you. You're not trying to um, uh, give a bright colour to these nails. You're trying to have the the colour matching in with the rest of the body. Um, if I mean, I just said to you, use any colours you want. Um, but there is limitations when you're doing certain miniatures on certain things. Like, I've got this on a green miniature, so I'm using a very, like, dirty green to match in with the rest of the miniature um, so that will work very well as little fingernails um, so there are times where for example if I did this in purple um, I would make the fingernails um, a, um, a lighter purple um, I wouldn't have them a different color you know uh, because you want the whole miniature to be color coordinated um, because if you have different colours everywhere, your eyes are taken away from different parts of the miniature. Um, Gorilla with a brush has um, a colour theory video, um, and well, which is well worth watching, and it teaches you all about the colour theory, and you know how your eye is distracted from your miniature. Um, and I've learned tons from him. Um, awesome. Uh, so having the correct colours binds your miniature together and it doesn't distract you so for example if this had bright pink toenails instead of looking at the face the first thing you'd see is these bright pink toenails distracting you from what you want to see on the miniature thank you gorilla exactly Yes. Yes. Yeah, so that's my little finger fingernails done and it's in just a um a, a lighter color than the body, but it's not distracting or pulling you your attention away from the top of the miniature. Now, what's going to be showing the most on this miniature will be when piggies attached to it so what will happen is the pig will probably get center of attention from your eye because it's the brightest source on this miniature and the only way I can make it so the miniature looks more enticing to look at is by highlighting that face these faces a lot more with lighter greens which I'll probably do and there we are my little goblins that's our hour I hope you enjoy this little show. It's um, it's really fantastic you all popping in, um, and I'm building my confidence each each time I do a show. Um, so thank you all for uh, supporting me and doing what I'm doing, and um, I'm going to be carrying on uh, in the near future for as long as possible. Um, and I'm enjoying it very much. So thank you all. And I wish you all a beautiful evening. And lots of love to all of my goblins. And everybody else who has joined my stream. So good night all. <laughs>